Remember the first time you used the internet and thought, cool, what was the big deal? Fast forward and it's changed everything, our work, relationship, even how we think. Today, you are at another one of those moments. OpenAI just shared update on AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. That might not seem groundbreaking now, but trust me, you will want to be part of this moment. Let's unpack what they revealed and why it matters for all of us. Uh, we'll start with an easy one, Sam. How close are we to AGI? Sam Altman introduces a fascinating idea. AGI isn't just a single leap forward. It's a climb up a ladder of capability. This shift in thinking is crucial because it's reshaped how we measure progress in AI. Let's see how they break it down. You know, we, we used to, every time we finished a system, we would say like, in what ways is this not an AGI? And it used to be like very easy. You kind of like make a little robotic hand that does a Rubik's cube or a Dota bot and it's like, oh, it does some things, but definitely not an AGI. Um, it's obviously harder to say now. And so we, we're trying to like stop talking about AGI as this general thing and we have this levels framework because the word AGI has become so overloaded. Um, so like real quickly, we use one for chatbots, two for reasoners, three for agents, four for innovators and five for organizations, like roughly. I think we clearly got to level two or we believe we clearly got to level two with O1. Um, and it you know, can do really quite impressive cognitive tasks. It's a very smart model. Um, it doesn't feel AGI like in a few important ways, but I think if you just do the one next step of making it you know, very agent-like, which is our level three, and which I think we will be able to do in the not distant future, it will feel surprisingly capable. Uh, still probably not something that most of you would call an AGI, though maybe some of you would. Um, but it's gonna feel like, all right, this is, this is like a significant thing. And then the, the leap, and I think we do that pretty quickly. Um, the, the leap from that to something that can really increase the rate of new scientific discovery, which for me is like a very important part of having an AGI, I feel a little bit less certain on that, but not a long time. Like I think all of this now is gonna happen pretty quickly and- This is where the stake get higher. If AI can unlock the new scientific discoveries faster than we ever imagined, it's not just a technology milestone, it's a humanity milestone. If you think about what happened from last dev day to, to this one in terms of model capabilities, and you, you're like, eh. You, I mean, if you go look at like, if you go from like 01 on a hard problem back to like 4 Turbo that we launched 11 months ago, you'll be like, wow, this is happening pretty fast. Um, and I think the next year will be very steep progress. Next two years, I think, will be very steep progress. Harder than that, hard to see with a lot of certainty. But I would say, like, not very. And at this point, the definitions really matter. And in fact, the fact that the definitions matter this much somehow means we're, like, getting kind of close. Yeah. And, you know, there, there used to be this sense of AGI where it was, like, it was a binary thing. And you, you were going to go to sleep one day, and there was no AGI, and wake up the next day, and there was AGI. I don't think that's exactly how we think about it anymore, but how have your views yeah. on this evolved? You know, the, the one, I agree with that. I think we're like, you know, in this like kind of period where it's gonna feel very blurry for a while and the, you know, is this AGI yet or is this not AGI or kind of like at what point? Yeah, it's just gonna be this like smooth exponential and. Yeah, Sam is right. There won't be a single, yeah, AGI is here moment. Instead, it will feel like a gradual awakening. But that's raised a bigger question. How will we know when we cross the line? Will we look back and think that was the moment or will it all blur together? You know, probably most people looking back in history won't agree like when that milestone was hit and we'll just realize it was like a silly thing. Even the Turing test, which I thought always was like this very clear milestone. You know, there was this like fuzzy period it kind of like went whooshing by and no one cared. Uh, <laughs> but but I, I think the right framework is it's just this one exponential. That said, um, if we can make an AI system that is like materially better at all of open AI than do, at doing AI research, that does feel to me like some sort of important discontinuity. 
it's probably still wrong to think about it that way. It probably still is the smooth exponential curve, but that feels like a real milestone. From levels of AGI to benchmarks that measure its progress. If AGI isn't a single milestone, how do we track how far we have come? That's where Arc AGI comes in. And trust me, this is where the things get really interesting. So I want to talk about the Arc benchmark at this point, but I would love to invite one of our friends, Greg, who is the president of the ARC Foundation, on to talk about this benchmark. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sam and Mark, thank you very much for mm -hmm. having us today. Of course. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Camrad, and I'm the president of the ARC Prize Foundation. ARC AGI isn't just a benchmark. It's like a litmus test for intelligence. It challenges AI system to do something uniquely human, learn and adopt in real time. But how does it work? And why is it so hard for AI? Let's break it down. So our first benchmark, ARC AGI, was developed in 2019 by Francois Cholet in his paper on the measure of intelligence. However, it has been unbeaten for five years. Now, in AI world, that's like, it feels like centuries is where it is. So the system that beats ARC AGI is gonna be an important milestone towards general intelligence. But I'm excited to say today that we have a new state-of-the-art score to announce. Before I get into that, though, I want to talk about what ARC AGI is. So I would love to show you an example here. <laughs> ARC AGI is all about having input examples and output examples. Well, they're good. They're good? <laughs> okay. Input examples and output examples. Now, the goal is you want to understand the rule of the transformation and guess it on the output. So, Sam, what do you think is happening in here? This is very simple, right? For us, it's almost second nature. But for AI, figuring out these rules on the fly is like trying to solve a puzzle without knowing the rules beforehand. That's why Arc AGI matter. It's pushing AI to think like us. Probably putting a dark blue square in the empty space. See, yes, that is exactly it. Now, that is really, um, it's easy for humans to uh, intuitively guess what that is. It's actually surprisingly hard for AI to, know, to understand what's going on. So I wanna show one more hard example here. Now, Mark, I'm gonna put you on the spot. What do you think is going on in this uh, task? This is where the genius of Arc AGI shine. Each task is completely different, forcing AI to adopt instead of repeating what it already knows. It's not about memorizing, it's about learning in real time, just like what we do. Okay, so you take each of these yellow squares, you count the number of colored kind of squares there and you create a border of that with. That that is exactly it. And that's much quicker than most people. So <laughs> congratulations on that. Um, what's interesting, though, is AI has not been able to get this problem thus far. And even though that we verified that a, a panel of humans could actually do it. Now, the unique part about ArcAGI is every task requires distinct skills. And what I mean by that is we won't ask, there won't be another task that you need to fill in the corners with blue squares. And but we do that on purpose. And the reason why we do that is because we want to test the model's ability to learn new skills on the fly. Mm -hmm. We don't just want it to uh, repeat what it's already memorized. That, that's the whole point here. Now, ARC AGI version one took five years to go from 0% to 5% with leading frontier models. However, today, I'm very excited to say that O3 has scored a new state of the art score that we have verified. On low compute, for uh, O3, it has scored 75.7 on Arc AGI's semi-private holdout set. This is the turning point. For five years, no AI system could crack Arc AGI's toughest challenges. And now, OpenAI's newest model, O3, just smashed through that wall. But is this a real intelligence or just a clever algorithm? Now, this is extremely impressive because this is within the uh, compute requirements that we have for our public leaderboard. And this is the new number one entry on ArcAGI Pub. So congratulations Thank to that. Thank you so much, yeah. Now, uh, as a capabilities demonstration, when we ask O3 to think longer and we actually ramp up to high compute, O3 was able to score 85.7% on the same hidden holdout set. This is especially important. Sorry, 87.5, yes. This is big. AI is officially outperforming human in some areas. This is especially important because um, human performance is, co uh, is comparable at 85% threshold. So being above this is a major milestone. And 
we have never tested a system that has done this or any model that has done this beforehand. So this is new territory in the ArcAGI world. Congratulations with that. Congratulations for making such a great benchmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I look at these scores, I realize um, I need to switch my worldview a little bit. I need to fix my AI intuitions about what AI can actually do and what it's capable of, uh, especially in this O3 world. From redefining AGI level to smashing the record with Arc AGI, it's clear we are living through a moment that will shape the future. The question is, are we ready for what comes next? And how do we make sure these breakthroughs benefit everyone, not just a select few? Let me know in the comments. Do you think this progress brings us closer to AGI, or are we still far from this ultimate goal? And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit that like button.